Hey guys, welcome to the November update of the 100 gallon mixed reef tank. Now this is a special update because the tank is now a year old. So what I'd like to do is go back and look at some of the things and some of the growth and progress this tank has gone through. Now if you follow the channel, you'll know that I built this tank from scrap glass that I picked up. Some of it even had to be cut and polished on the edges. And uh, I have a whole playlist on that. Actually building the tank on the channel. If you're interested in that kind of thing, I'll leave a link in the description to the playlist. So this is an injection silicone system which means the uh, panels were spaced apart and the silicone was injected into it, kind of like Red Sea uses. And although it didn't come out Red Sea perfect, I like the tank. And it's got a good track record because it still holds water. So, it was very fun to build. And there it is, full of water, about one year from today, and the refugium was up and running a couple of weeks before that. So this is what it looks like, and I'm still getting used to the new phone, so the color and all isn't exactly where I'd like it to be. But I um, thought we'd start with the green slimer, which is pretty much a showpiece there. It is about a year ago. You can see it's always been happy in the tank, but it didn't start growing uh, until a couple months into it. There's the progress of it from one to the next. And, you know, I was trying to get updates, and some of the updates, monthly updates, I didn't actually show the coral. So it was tough, and I went through a lot of footage to get all of this. But there it is. It's a great coral, and it's an easy acropora. And next to it, you see that rainbow bird's nest that's in the back. Now that piece has grown from two frags. There's one of them right there, the pink and green tipped one. That's what I started at a year ago. And there's two frags next to each other right behind the stylo. And you can just see the process of them growing and growing. <laughs> and then they start to take over that green bird's nest. And that just always kept growing. So I got to the point where I had to separate the growth in the tank, and now it sits on this rock by itself. But it's still growing, and it's still a great piece. Yeah, and I like it a lot. Now, although this is a dominated SPS tank, I do like my LPS, especially hammers. Uh, that's the only Euphelia I've ever had. I know there's frog spawns, octospawns, um and torches. Torches require a little more real estate than I'm willing to give them. But let's talk about my hammers. And there they are when they first came into the main tank here about a year ago. A couple of heads each. And I also have some trumpet corals around there. And, you know, as they started to grow, they started to crowd each other and the trumpet corals out too. So it was a constant little moving game. But the, um, purple one with the green or the green one with purple tips is over a dozen heads now from I think it might have had four heads when it first went in there and there's the trumpet coral has been moved to the softy tank and that has a lot of heads as well but you can see it's just a flourishing piece now here's something for people laying out encrusting corals here's some good advice for you to follow this is a Meteor Shower Cyphastria and a Rainbow Montipora on the same rock. Now, harmlessly, when I first started the tank, that's just two frags near each other on a rock. Not a big deal. But as you see, the Cyphastria grows faster than the Montipora. And eventually, they grew into each other. And when two encrusting corals grow into each other, 
they're usually not going to play nice. And uh, in this case, the Cyphastria took over the Monty, but that's why you see I have dead coral skeletons on there, hoping that one could grow onto the other. It gets a little hidden behind in this update. But I have those dead uh, bird's nest, and I actually have frags of each now growing on bird's nests. So it'll be interesting, and I was also able to save them. And then there's the Montipora Confusa, I believe. It's a very nice green coral with purple polyps when it's happy. And that started out as just a little nub of a frag. There it is. It was actually brown when I first got it for a while, but soon before I put it in this tank, it started to turn green and it started to grow. And it's t tables and branches, so it's pretty interesting. There it's actually growing into some clove polyps that are next to it. So it's always been a good piece. Um, I actually have some frags of it too. Now this next piece is a Montipora Capricornus. And I know that's not a big deal for most of you. Most of you can get this to grow. But I had issues with it when I first got this coral. It would not grow. I think it's because it was a wild caught piece. And it was a lot thicker than most pieces. And what I actually needed to do was scrape at the edges of them just to get it to do this and it started to skirt like this which was very odd I'd never seen them look like it was dripping down instead of plating out but each area where it encrusted onto the rock it got a good foothold first and then it started to plate and you can see the plating there as the months go by it's hard showing this from old footage because you you weren't planning on having this conversation when you were showing it. <laughs> but there it is. And many times moving things in there, I have broken pieces off of it. And they just grow back. Now here's one of my favorite pieces for color. It's a bubblegum Tosa. And I got it from Reefing with O. And it was a tiny little frag. I had had it a little while at this picture, but this is when it first went into the tank. And this thing just grows and grows. But it's got this great bubblegum color to it, which is, you know, just really stands out from my other corals. So I do like it. And it's grown into such great shape. And I've also broken pieces off and have frags of that as well. So it's nice to have frags. You know, I've been able to give them to people. So then I thought I could try and do, uh, since I usually open my videos with a full tank shot, I thought I could stage it and get full tank shots from the beginning to the end. So that was the first update's full tank shot. You can see how small everything was and the rockscape was different. And then as it progressed, yeah, I usually do stuff like that in the beginning too, so it kind of takes from it. But you can see the progression and as the tank matured and also as I move things around and it's kind of sad because I look back I see my coal tang which I don't have anymore I lost him to flukes but there it is with a bunch of softies in it and a whole bunch of other things I really just you know it was a mixed tank and I was always moving stuff around and this is where it really started to take shape here everything was starting to grow into each other and you just see every month just gets a little bigger so keep in mind when you're making videos that someday you're going to want to make a video like that oh this must be august because that's side boob you know you got to have a good side boob in august summertime <laughs> and i don't have every month here because uh, just going through all this footage really t really was a job i didn't realize once you get into it you got to keep going though right so I can't go over every piece in the tank or we'd be sitting here for a half an hour and uh, I don't even know that I want to do that so I wouldn't expect you guys to do it. But there are a few pieces that I like to give honorable mention to like that bright green bird's nest that everybody's always liked. This little acro started as a little thumbnail of a frag 
I don't even know what it is, but it's green and it's tabling out and it's doing amazing things. And I just hope it stays with me. There's the purple stylo in the back that has been down to a nub a few times. And you can't have an update without talking about my first fish I ever had. This is the longest guy. This guy's been with me longer than any other fish. It's the Watchman Gobi. And then there's this bird's nest, which I've never really even talked about, but it's always been there. And it's not real sharp, but it's not real smooth. It's very different. And then these little gems that I get that were just brown acros. Oh, and there's the red planet from Sabella. I still can't ever get those colors to show on the video of what's going on in the base. And, of course, the bubble tips. And you'll notice one has escaped off the rock. It split again, and it's over there playing with the favias. So I may have to intervene. But, can't have a reef tank without some clownfish and anemones going on. So thanks for watching, and uh, we ran a little late, and there's my clam, I still have it, it really hasn't grown that much, but I still have it guys, and I'll see you on the next one.